Right, welcome to the Fresh Start Group training webinar. Uh, tonight's training, as you can see there, is called Goals and Attitude. This is uh, number seven of our. Uh, hold on, sorry, let me just. Uh, oh, oh, just want to remove that. Oops. Sorry, remove that a moment. Right. Sorry about that. Yes. <clears throat> so this is the seventh of eight training webinars in our clean easy circle of success. And in this particular one we're going to cover whether or not your attitude is important to your success, things that affect your attitude, why setting goals are important, and um, just spending a little bit of time on your goal setting. So, number one, is your attitude important? Well, let's have a look at this. Basically, when, when you start with Clean Easy, you're the same as every other distributor. You, you all have the same opportunity. We have the same catalogues, the same products. Uh, all, we all have the same cost. We all have the same payment plan. So it's the same for everybody when you get started. But some people will be more successful than, than others. And why is that? Well, my suggestion to you is that it's all to do with their attitude or your attitude if you're thinking about yourself. How do you feel when you get up in the morning? Well, sometimes there's a, you know, a couple of different th ways you can think about it. One is, mm, I'm going to get these catalogues out, whatever it takes. The other might be, mm, not sure about this, the weather doesn't look great, maybe I'll try tomorrow. Uh, a key phrase to remember here that will help is that successful people do what they know they should do even when they don't feel like doing it. And that's what this is all about. You know, this is your, the, the thing about Clean Easy is you're your own boss. You can choose whether to get up and put those catalogues out or not. But if you don't do it, then you're not going to be successful. So your attitude, your approach to life in general makes the difference between whether or not you get your catalogues out on a, on a morning, whether you smile to your customers or not, maybe that leads to building a good rapport with your customers or not, which will then result in a strong, reliable customer base. Um, it might make the difference between whether you put your advertising leaflets out or not, um, maybe whether you can be bothered to call up the people who replied to you or not. Um, and so that can lead to, you know, did, did, did you bring in an extra team member this month or not? That will result in a strong team providing a residual income. So your attitude makes the difference between a good customer base between um, or not, or a strong team providing you with a good residual income or not. So you know, as you can see there, your attitude does make a big difference. And if you put all these things together, the different, you know, putting a few catalogues out, speaking to people who reply to your adverts can make the difference between £50 a week and £500 a week. Or, you know, if your business is growing a bit already, the difference between 500 a month or 5000 a month. Your attitude makes a big difference. So, if you accept that your attitude is important, can you do anything about it? Can you improve your attitude? Well, uh, the answer is yes. Your attitude is affected by your life philosophies. I talk a lot more about that in, in the next module, but I will talk about it briefly in a moment. Um, and success helps your attitude. If you've just started and you're struggling and it's not going too well, then you, you know your attitude it will reflect that. But if you are being successful, if you are achieving some goals, then it makes you feel more positive and that helps your attitude. So, how can you achieve some success? Well, the thing to do is to achieve some goals. If you achieve some goals, you feel that you are successful. And success and those goals will be different for everybody. But you should think about setting yourself some goals. Some short-term goals, some medium-term goals and some long-term goals. And I'm going to give you a few examples in a moment. In order to achieve those goals, though, 
you need a strong why, a reason for why you're doing Clean Easy. Um, just as an example, you might set a goal, you create a plan for how you're going to achieve that, you start to take those first steps, whatever that might be, whatever those steps are, and then some obstacles appear. So maybe your goal was to you know, hit your first £1,000 check and you created a plan uh, about putting catalogues out and building in team members. You start to do that and then a couple of team members that join then decide to leave. Or you're putting some catalogues out and one of your best customers says she's moving to the other side of the country. There's all sorts of little things that will appear. However, in order to overcome those obstacles, it's really helpful if you've got a strong reason why. Why are you doing this? It's not just for the money. It's there's, there's something behind that. Um, and um, it really helps if you can get to the bottom of your reasons, your 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 why, and make it emotional. Understand what 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 it is. So for lots of people. It, it would be their family would, would be their, their reason why they're doing this. Let me just give you a brief example. If I put a, a plank of wood on the ground, you know, a normal plank of wood, I don't know what they are, nine inches wide, 20 feet long, something like that, and said, I'll give you 20 pounds to walk across it, would you do that? Well, uh, I guess you'd say yes, no problem at all. Just walk on the plank, bump, 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 right to the other end, there's 20 quid. Easiest 20 quid you've ever learned. Okay, if I then take that plank of wood, to the top of a huge skyscraper, put it from one window in the skyscraper across to the opposing skyscraper at the same height. So you've got this plank of wood in between two skyscrapers, 100 meters off the ground or whatever, and said, Here's 20 quid, will you walk across it now? You may well say, Absolutely no way, it's just not worth the risk for that 20 quid. So, how could I help you to walk across that plank? Well, suppose you're four-year-old daughter is in the other building and that building catches fire. So there you are at the top of the building. Your daughter is only 20 feet away but she can't get out to safety. Would you go across that plank of wood then to rescue her? And I guess you're saying of course you would. You know you might go down on your hands and knees but whatever you would get across that plank. You know, the 20 quid's irrelevant then. You've got an emotional reason for doing something, for getting across the plank of wood. And, th and it's the same with anything that you do, you know, that's a bit of an extreme example to prove the point, but hopefully you understand what I'm, what I'm getting at there. So, setting goals is a, a good way to understand things that are important to you and help you achieve some goals which result in, you know, a feeling of success, and that success really improves your attitude. So a good thing to do is to have some actions that then produce the results. The results being your goal, really. So let's have an example here. Your, your results might be you want to earn yourself a £500 bonus. In order to do that, maybe you need to put your 200 catalogues out twice a week and deliver 500 leaflets twice a week. The bonus itself is kind of the result. It's, it's outside of your control a little bit. So thinking, I really want that bonus, I really want that bonus, won't actually make it happen. But if you know what should lead to it, if you know the actions, then you can control the actions. You control whether or not you go and put your catalogues out. You control whether or not you deliver those 500 leaflets. So having a goal, creating some actions that will deliver that goal, is a great way to be able to motivate yourself, motivate yourself sorry, each morning to go out and do the actions that you know will lead to those results. Maybe in the medium term, you'd like to pay off a car loan. So that's a good thing to do, pay off that car loan. That means that you're not, you're not in debt and also it frees up some money that you're having to use every month to, to pay off your interest rate. So maybe your um, medium term actions, if you like, in order to, to produce that result, are that you need to continue blanketing your catalogues until you've got about 500 customers. Now, if you know that 500 customers will produce an extra, whatever, £500 a month, which would then help you to pay off that car loan, then that's a good, good target to have. And maybe the other thing you need to do is to start to build your residual income, so you want to talk to 10 people a day about the business. Again, the actions are things you can control. Paying off a car loan is, a, if you like, a result of taking these actions. 
maybe a longer term goal is you'd like to buy yourself a brand new Mercedes um, maybe some of the things you need to do there one of the actions might be to make sure you're generating at least 30 leads a week we know that if you delete if you can generate 30 leads a week you will introduce people to the business and your business will grow um, so you can control that you can generate those leads by putting leaflets out newspaper adverts all the different rods in the pond that we've talked about but also maybe if you're starting to grow a team now maybe one of the things that you need to do is to run some sort of weekly webinar for your team again that's something that you can do you can control whether you generate those leads you can control whether or not you put the web in, the, the team webinar out and become a leader to your team and all of those things will result in you earning enough money to be able to buy that new Mercedes so the point I'm trying to make with all these things is having goals some targets are great and what make sure you've got actions that you can control that will lead to those lead to you achieving those results if you follow those actions consistently and persistently so starting off with small actions you know putting out a couple of hundred catalogs twice a week you know it's not going to take you forever what we're talking about here 10 15 hours a week something like that um, but the results of doing that and then continuing to do it and continuing to do all the other actions can lead to big results and that success leads to motivation because every week you know if you know that putting out 200 catalogs twice a week will give you that first goal then every week you're going to get a small success you get up you make sure you do the actions that you need to those small successes leave you more motivated because at the end of every week you can say tick yep I've achieved my first target and then every couple of months you get a bigger success so you become more motivated and you set yourself more more stretching more demanding goals and maybe once a year you achieve a long-term goal and doing that gives you serious motivation so you start to look at improving your business working even harder setting yourself more challenging goals because you know every time you're setting a goal if you put into action the actions you know, put into effect the actions that you need to do you know that you've achieved them and you can do that again with more and more challenging goals which lead to bigger and bigger successes all of this success all of these actions all of these things that you've done will constantly improve your attitude so what can you expect when you're in your clean easy business um, clean easy um, distributors tend to go through a number of phases in their business over the the weeks and months and years that you're in a clean easy business so first off what you normally find is uh, there's a big excitement phase you you've got an idea of what you can achieve you've seen some of the successful people in the business you won't do everything it takes to become a success then some things start to happen maybe you get a few negative people talking to you oh yeah I did that in the past never made anything out of it or customers that say oh no I don't like that product I'm not going to order from this anymore or whatever it might be and you start to doubt whether you can do it, whether you can put up with that frustration or whether you can just ignore those negative people um, and if you don't do anything about it you start to feel you know, you're feeling in the pits basically and, and this is normal this is something that can happen to everyone in the business could be after a couple of days after a couple of months or, not, or even after a couple of years and what tends to happen is you start to stay away from the meetings you find excuses for why you can't you know, join in or go to the team meeting you find faults with the, the pay plan or the catalogs or the products you start to sort of find reasons for not doing it but if you've been through that goal setting and you've got a good attitude what that leads you to is a fight stage and with support with support from your upline so that'll be me or you know whoever brought you into the business you you can enter that fight stage to get you out of the self-doubts and the pits um, and basically you start to think you know I'm never going to give up I know that this business works and success is only just around the corner for me so if you focus on your goals and your actions instead of the obstacles and you start to attend events where you've got positive speakers explaining all the benefits of the business it just kind of reminds you of what you're looking for what's possible um, and if you communicate with your upline so sort of speak to me speak to all your sort of them um, your your upline uh, distributors then they can help you through all of these self-doubt stages 
Okay, so a couple of questions. Make sure you've set yourself some short-term goals. These are things that you know within the first three months you can hit your goals. You know, your first goal might just be something like fifty pounds a week extra so that I can treat the kids to a pizza, or I can buy you know after after a month I want to be able to upgrade my laptop. I want to be able to buy an extra laptop, you know, whatever it might be. So you set yourself some short-term goals so that you can get that success habit working from the beginning. Also set yourself some medium term goals because if you're just doing lots of little short term goals sometimes you can't sort of see the bigger picture. So it's really useful to have a medium term goal and this might be something like you know start to pay off that debt or <coughs> Um, you know, earn enough so that you can buy yourself a newer car. Something like that. That would be good medium term goals. And then longer term goals, these could be you know really big big um goals that are going to be challenging but so exciting when you achieve them. So it might just be something like you know, being able to buy yourself a brand new car or putting a deposit down on that house you've all, always wanted or anything like that. But something that's, it's usually better to try to visualize something that's emotionally important to you rather than just saying, oh well I want to be on £2,000 a month by then or £5,000 a month or whatever. I mean the money's you know, usually behind a lot of our goals but it's the actual, you know, what you would use the money for, and making that an emotional thing that that you really would like to achieve, that makes it a really good goal to to um, to set to set yourself. Okay, so this is the end of the webinar. I've raised through it fairly quickly, but hopefully it kind of makes sense. And um, that was number seven in the in the series, all about setting your goals and how your attitude is important and how the two are linked together and next week we're going to talk about personal development personal development is, is a, an interesting subject but I'm a big believer that personal development never stops and whatever you do with clean easy whether you earn yourself a fortune and, and uh, achieve all of your dreams or whether you leave it within a couple of weeks because you decide it's not right for you if you've started a habit of personal development the skills that you learn will help you be successful for the rest of your life in whatever you decide to do so please join me next week i'll send out all the links and everything as usual um, and until then uh, have a great week and i'll catch up with you soon bye for now